Ahoy there, you landlubbers, and welcome to my Let's Play of Risen 2. It's me, Captain Greenbear, your humble host, and I proudly present to you the newest, uh, most recent game of the astonishing German game developers Piranha Bytes. It's Risen 2, the second part of the Risen series, and I was so excited about this title coming out so soon. And today is the re uh, release day, basically. I got the game um, yesterday already, but I couldn't install it just until now because there was, you know, a tiny online barrier that I couldn't cross. But today's the day, and here I am, finally playing it. Uh, Alright, as usual, I have to say th some things in the beginning, but I'll make it very short. This is a roleplay, uh, an RPG, so it's a roleplay game. And those of you who know me already know that I tend to, to uh, mildly roleplay and that is exactly what I will do in this game as well. I will not, for example, eat and drink just for the purpose of pretending that I'm hungry and thirsty, but my actions and decisions will be influenced by a certain character that I uh, thought of um, earlier today and yesterday. And this character I will try to portray as as um, honestly uh, as possible. Um, and this character I will also play in the first Risen game, which I have yet to let's play. So for any future generations watching this, I am playing let's playing Risen 2 first, and only then I will do Risen 1. So for you watching this, there isn't really a need to watch my let's play or any other person's let's play of Risen 1 first. Uh, the story, as far as I've seen it, might be a bit confusing if you haven't played the first uh, Risen title. So, when necessary, I will explain from what I remember, uh, because it has been quite some time uh, since I played through the first game. And where I can't explain, I will probably make up some kind of explanation. So, uh, that's that. <laughs> Alright, last thing is, this is a blind let's play, of course, because this game just came out today and I don't think there really is um, an online solution that I could uh, consider uh, when I get stuck. So this is all blind, I don't know much about the game, I had a bit of a look at the beginning of the game in order to do a test recording, but apart from that, I don't really know much what will happen in this game. And that's it. So, let's start right into it. There are always beings endowed with special power, chosen by the gods to determine the fate of the world. The Titan Lords were the first, Lords of the Elements. With their help, the gods created our world. But when their work was done, the Titan Lords turned on each other and began a war that ravaged the Earth. The gods grew angry when they saw what had become of the world and banished the Titan Lords to the depths of the Earth and the sea, where they were to remain imprisoned until the end of time. An ancient prophecy says on the day they are freed, the age of destruction will begin. Today, we know its truth.
With all due respect, Lieutenant, you're drunk and a disgrace to the uniform. <sighs> Go bother someone who gives a damn. Commandant Carlos wants to see you. He's waiting at the top of the tower. Well? All right. Right, here we are. Oh, so excited. So this is our hero. The, it's the same hero from the first Risen game, although he looks a lot different uh, in, in the second game. He has, he has actually hair now on, on his head. In the first game he, he didn't have any hair at all. And he also has an eye patch, uh, which is connected to a nice little story, which I will probably tell you someone later in the game. Uh, so far he's just looking like the typical pirate. And this is apparently our chamber. We have a we have a map over here, uh, right above our bed. Also a nice picture. I can I can take all this stuff. There's a chicken lying around here. I don't really want to take because this it actually looks a bit messy around here. Then again, I guess it it feels comfy for me. Here's my money. All right, an officer sword. Maybe I should I should pick that if you know the commander wants to talk to me. So I'll I'll pick that. Should I take some alcohol with me? Yes. Can't hurt, right? No, I'll, I'll leave the apple and the healthy food here. There's more chest. I'll just check if everyone, uh, if anyone stole anything while I was, you know, being unconscious because I was drunk. So we have 400 gold. Um, I, I think I'll take that. Alright, yeah, I took it and now I'll uh, do what the hint tells me to do and open my inventory. So this is us standing here very casually. This is this is really nicely done up here. This this artwork. This is I can't really see what this is, but probably some some sea creature. All right. So this is our inventory. We we don't really. Where can I see what I have? Loot. No usable items. Rock. Uh, this elixir of life for all seafarers, not as strong as drum, so not as effective. So it will, oh yeah, um, it will increase my blood by 50, and blood is basically my, my hit points. So they, they kind of renamed that, just so you guys know. But where, <laughs> where is, wait, right hand, my primary weapon, left hand, pistols, daggers, and dirty tricks. That's a bit... That's something I, I don't really like in, in certain games and especially RPGs if if they always say that um, you have to hold your primary weapon in the right hand because I'm, I'm not a lefty myself but I, I know several lefties and I sometimes you know like to, to play as, as a lefty and just to switch around my weapons just for the fun of it and uh, it's a bit strange that, that they don't let you do that because you know it would be so simple to just switch that around. But all right, uh, I want to. I don't really see where where that sword is that I that I picked up. All all right, it's an all. So we'll we'll pick that. And I just equipped it, I think. So it does twenty to forty damage, which is good, I guess. I can't really compare it to anything. Uh, it's a piercing weapon. One hundred gold. Well, all right. It's an officer's sword, so it it must be it must be good, right? Sounds sounds nice to me. And I also have a quick bar down here, so I guess I will pick um, the rock here because it seems to be some kind of healing potion for us. And I will put my only weapon so far on one, so that I can easily equip it. Now let's have a look around. Uh, we have our character here, so. In case we want to level up, which I guess we can't do yet because we didn't really do anything, we can, um, yeah, basically put our learning points into attributes, talents, skills, and so on. We'll see that as soon as I level up. Also, we have a map here. So we are here in Caldera, uh, the seat of the High Council, the 
the Inquisition is headquartered at the Crystal Fortress. Now, that sounds fancy. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot to mention that we are in the Southern Seas, uh, located in the Southern Seas. Well, the first Risen game was somewhere situated in the north, I suppose, on an island that was called Faranga, I think. Can't quite remember. Any case, we travelled over here, so we are in Caldera now, and there are s there are multiple other I uh, islands here, a pretty big one over here too, which is called Ar Arbor. Oh no, it's it's continuing Arborea. All right, the others are unnamed. This looks like a volcano island, but then again, uh, we already saw in the cutscene that there is. A lot of burning going on in the background of our island that we are currently at. So let's close this again and open our logbook. All right, let's do what the hint says. I mean, it's it's the first video. Meet the commandant. Uh, commandant Carlos wants to talk to me. He's waiting at the top of the tower. He's probably the guy I saw in the cutscene. You know, with the spyglass, uh, looking at the at the sea. Set map marker, show quest dialogue. No, I'll set a map marker. So I suppose. <laughs> there, he's right in front of me. Well, I don't really have a, a local map, I suppose. Yeah, I don't. So, uh, let's search for him. Come on! Oh, you are the guy who told us to go, Juan. And this is what's going on in the background of the island. Everything's burning, so there are some some towers that caught fire, I suppose. Uh, let's run over here. Interesting. I can't really see anything because of the high building there, but yeah, it seems the whole island caught fire. So we have yet to discover what happened there. But it seems we're fine. I mean, no mo no one's in panic here, so at least the part of the island we're in seems to be safe. Now, what is this? Marky Berry. Oh, might be I'm a bit hungry, so I'll just take it. You know, after drinking so much. What is this? This seems to be... Can I get water? No. 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 Psst. Come here. Oh, hello there. Looking for anything? Give me some gold and I can get it for you. Oh... Yeah, you're, you know, kind of an Islamer, so... What sort of things are you talking about? Weapons, booze, whatever you need, really. You pay me, I tell you where it's waiting for you. And you go and pick it up yourself. Easy, eh? No, it sounds interesting, but I surely won't give you any money if you don't, you know, tell me uh, if you if you are just going to tell me where I might possibly find something, that's that's not really a smart deal, is it? What do you need gold for in here? What do you think, piss for brains? Well, if you're just going to insult me, hey, wait, don't go yet. Fucking boring me no one to natter with. They ship me off to Takarigua, and there'll be no one but the savages to talk to. Alright, very, very nice uh, voice acting here, in my opinion. I already noticed in, in the first cutscene that uh, it, I think it was Sir Anthony Hopkins who voiced the narrator, and he, with uh, his strong. Oh, Gosh, I hope I'm not embarrassing myself now, but I think it's it's a strong Scottish accent. Uh, so so it, it sounds really nice. That's just what I'm going to say. I'm not quite sure about the main hero, or about the nameless hero, just yet. Uh, how his voice differs from how he sounded like in the first Risen game. So we'll have to find that out yet. 